Approximately 125 million years ago, a small dinosaur spread its wings over the ancient forests of China. Unlike any other creature, it possessed up to four wings, making it one of the greatest mysteries in paleontology. The exquisitely preserved Microraptor fossils from the Cretaceous period not only reveal a creature capable of flight, but also unveil a bold evolutionary experiment, an experiment that shaped the path leading to the emergence of birds. Why would a small dinosaur evolve with four wings instead of two Microraptor forces us to ask that question? Discovered in the Jufotang formation of Liaoning, China and dating to roughly 125 to 120 million years ago, this animal stood out even among the remarkable feathered dinosaurs of the early Cretaceous, about the size of a crow, with fossils showing individuals around 30.3 inches, 77 centimeters long, and wingspans close to 35.4 inches, 90 centimeters. It weighed less than 4.4 pounds, two kilograms and it wasn't rare. Paleontologists have documented well over 100 complete skeletons, and reports suggest more than 300 specimens exist in collections today. That abundance makes Microraptor one of the most comprehensively studied feathered dinosaurs, especially when it comes to flight feathers. Unlike most early relatives of birds, Microraptor carried long, stiff veins, not only on its forelimbs, but also on its hind limbs. Even its tail ended in a broad fan of feathers, an aerodynamic feature rarely seen in non-avian dinosaurs. At first glance, the body looked so unusual, it almost seemed impractical, like nature had misplaced wings onto its legs by mistake. Yet the repetition of this design across hundreds of fossils made it clear this was no accident. An entire lineage was built around this plan, suggesting evolution had tested and preserved it. The big question was function. Were these hindwings a failed evolutionary experiment or a step on the pathway to modern flight? Some paleontologists initially dismissed them as an ornament potentially cumbersome if the animal tried to take off. Others saw them as evidence that dinosaurs experimented with many different aerodynamic strategies before true bird-like flight emerged. A rough analogy comes from flying squirrels and other gliders. These mammals have membranes stretched between their limbs that let them parachute between trees. Microraptor operated on similar principles of surface area, but with proper flight feathers and rigid veins instead of skin. Structurally, its hind limb feathers resembled wings, though set in an arrangement unlike anything alive today. This led to competing reconstructions of the animal in life. One model depicted Microraptor like a biplane with four wings and hind wings stacked above and below each other to create lift over multiple surfaces. That design offered the potential for lift, but may have reduced agility while airborne. Another approach arranged the hind limbs out to the sides, forming a single large four-winged sheet better for stable gliding between trees. Each posture hinted at a different lifestyle. A biplane stance favored bursts of powered movement while a splayed form suited slow, careful glides from trunk to trunk. The abundance of remains allowed tests far beyond sketches. Fossils consistently preserved long veins on both front and back limbs, ruling out the idea that they were just rare mutations. To investigate their function, scientists built life-sized models and even robotic versions of Microraptor then flew them through wind tunnels. The results showed lift could be generated in both postures with stability at low speeds and the ability to bank sharply traits useful to a predator navigating dense forests. The animal could likely boost itself off tree trunks, spread all four limbs, and glide in a controlled path. Under the right conditions, it may even have transitioned into short bouts of active flapping. Rather than a single flight style, Microraptor seems to have had options. Its feathered legs provided extra lift surfaces, its tail fan steadied its glide, and its wings allowed just enough power to extend a glide into something more. Instead of a mistake of design, the four wings were part of a flexible system for moving through a complex environment where maneuverability was essential to catching prey and avoiding larger predators. Seen this way, Microraptor shows flight was not an all or nothing event that suddenly appeared in birds. It was shaped over millions of years through repeated experiments in anatomy and aerodynamics. And while its body revealed radical solutions for taking to the air, another secret was preserved at the microscopic level, hidden in the structure of its feathers themselves. 
Microraptor wasn't only remarkable for its extra set of wings, but it also carried an appearance unlike anything else in its world. Fossils show long, veined feathers attached not just to the arms and hands, but also the legs and even the metatarsus, giving each limb an aerodynamic surface. The tail ended in a narrow fan, or in some specimens, a distinctive pair of streamer-like feathers extending from the tip. Combined with its relatively short, stiff tail, supported by fused vertebrae, elongated forelimbs, and a wrist joint that could swivel like that of modern birds, Microraptor had a silhouette that already hinted at avian flight surfaces millions of years before true birds spread across the globe. Yet the surprise went beyond feather placement. When researchers examined its fossils under microscopes, they found the preserved outlines of melanosomes, the tiny structures inside feathers that determine color in living birds. Their shape and arrangement closely matched those of modern glossy black birds, such as starlings and crows. In 2012, a study in science confirmed what that meant. Microraptor's plumage was not brown or gray as once imagined, but glossy, iridescent black. Depending on the light, its feathers would have flashed subtle shades of blue or green, producing a surface that shifted in appearance much like a starling's feathers today. This was one of the first times paleontologists could confidently reconstruct the true colors of a non-avian dinosaur. The physics behind that shimmer comes from structure rather than pigment. Layers of melanosomes refract and interfere with light amplifying some wavelengths while cancelling others. The result is an optical effect that changes with angle making feathers appear metallic or slick. In Microraptor's case, the effect would have made its feather coat dynamic, not a uniform black, but a living surface that gleamed in sunlight or dappled through forest canopies. For scientists, this finding challenged decades of reconstructions that treated feathered dinosaurs as uniformly dull. Instead, it suggested that visual impact had already become a factor in dinosaur evolution. Why Microraptor had such glossy plumage is still debated. Some paleontologists note that iridescent feathers are associated with communication in many birds, such as courtship displays or territorial signaling. Others point out that the structure that produces iridescence may also lend feathers greater stiffness, potentially improving their aerodynamic performance. Both ideas remain possible, and there may not be a single answer. What can be said with confidence is that Microraptor had a complex feather system serving more than one role, insulation flight surfaces and visual impact all at once. Taken together, these details give us a surprisingly bird-like creature. Its swiveling wrist joint allowed it to adjust feathers in flight while its long arms and feathered hind limbs created lift surfaces unfamiliar in any modern flyer. Its stiff tail contributed stability and combined with its glossy plumage may also have functioned as a visual signal. Instead of the drab utilitarian animal once imagined, Microraptor was small but visually striking a four-winged dinosaur with a gleaming coat. But dazzling plumage alone does not describe the full animal. Fossil evidence has revealed not just how Microraptor looked in life, but also what it ate. And those clues tell the story of a predator that despite its tiny size was equipped to hunt in more than one way. For paleontologists, one of the most persistent questions about Microraptor has been simple. Could it really fly on paper? It had all the right parts, broad feathers on its arms, legs and tail, plus asymmetric veins shaped like those of modern flyers. But whether these allowed it to glide alone or to beat its wings like a bird remains unsettled. The earliest and most widely accepted interpretation was that Microraptor was a glider. Fossils show long flight feathers on both forelimbs and hindlimbs with enough total surface area to create aerodynamic lift. Reconstructions demonstrate that its four-winged body could spread its limbs and generate stable glides between trees. Many models, including those tested in wind tunnels, confirm that this setup worked well for short aerial descents and controlled maneuvering. In this view, Microraptor was not a powered flyer so much as a tree-to-tree -tree hunter using gravity and wing area to cross gaps and surprise prey. However, new evidence has complicated that picture. In 2012, a study in PNAS described unusual trackways that some researchers interpret as Microraptor running while flapping its wings. The prints suggested long stride lengths as though the animal was using wing beats to add lift or forward thrust while sprinting along the ground. This flap running behavior resembles what modern birds can do when launching from flat ground or climbing inclines. If correct, the tracks would point to a wider range of aerial behaviors than gliding alone blurring the line between passive descent and active flight. 
The possibility of full-powered flight has sparked the greatest debate. Anatomical studies differ on what the shoulder joint can actually do. Some analyses argue that the shoulder's orientation limited a complete vertical upstroke, meaning Microraptor could not flap repeatedly like a crow or pigeon. That interpretation frames it as an animal partway along the evolutionary path to genuine flapping flight, but not quite there. On the other hand, separate research highlights structures that look closer to modern birds, a semi-lunate carpal bone, allowing wrist rotation features suggesting a propatagium at the wing's leading edge and feather arrangements overlapping like those of birds that actively flap. Some specimens even preserve fused elements of the sternum that could have anchored stronger flight muscles and hints of a lula like feathers that aid in lift at low speeds. These details open the door to at least limited powered launching or wing-assisted climbing, even if continuous flapping flight was beyond its ability. Taken together, the evidence suggests Microraptor was not locked into a single mode of movement. It could glide effectively, likely the most common way it moved through forests. It may have used flap running when speed or angle mattered, employing its wings as partial thrust engines during takeoff, and depending on the individual specimen and its anatomy, it might have managed short bursts of powered flight, especially when aided by slope or elevation. Specialists continue to argue the balance of these strategies, but most agree Microraptor had more aerial control than a simple glider and less than a modern bird. The practical takeaway is clear. Microraptor's wings were functional tools, not decorative experiments. They gave it real command of the air, whether gliding from tree to tree steering onto prey or enhancing leaps with wing beats. Whether those wings ever delivered sustained flapping flight remains one of the central unresolved questions. But the combination of features shows an animal exploring the limits of what feathered limbs could achieve. And when you shift from what Microraptor did in the air to how its bones were built, the picture becomes even more striking. In its skeleton, you can watch the blueprint of modern birds beginning to take shape. To understand how Microraptor connects dinosaurs to birds, you have to look at the details of its anatomy and how those parts might have worked in the air. Its wrists contain semi-lunate carpals, half-moon shaped bones that let the hands fold inward in a way similar to modern wing tucking. Its shoulder girdle was built for a greater range of motion than most ground-dwelling theropods, allowing the arms to sweep in wide arcs. And the feathers attached to those arms were not symmetrical insulating plumes, but slender asymmetrical veins, like those used for aerodynamic lift by birds today. These traits suggest a skeleton not quite reptilian, not yet fully avian, but positioned in between. One of the most technical debates comes from how to arrange Microraptor's four wings in life. Early reconstructions proposed a biplane posture with the forewings and hindwings staggered at different vertical levels. This setup seemed appealing at first because like a two-deck aircraft, it could increase total lift. Artists often illustrated Microraptor gliding in this posture with the forelimbs held above the hindlimbs to create two layers of wings. The aerodynamic simplicity of the design made it attractive to those who saw Microraptor as primarily a glider. Later modeling studies, however, raised problems. When 3D physical models and wind tunnel tests were conducted, researchers found that a true biplane posture may not have been the most stable option. Instead, evidence pointed toward a more laterally outspread arrangement of the hind limbs, what is sometimes called an abducted posture, where the rear wings were extended to the side, roughly in the same plane as the arms. In this setup, Microraptor could generate lift while also producing high drag, a combination useful for maneuvering between trees at low speed. Both postures remain under discussion and paleontologists often emphasize that biomechanical results depend heavily on assumptions about limb flexibility and how the fossils preserve wing positions. The debate remains active with no single reconstruction accepted as final. Microraptor's tail completes the picture. Its fossils show a stiffened structure with a terminal fan of feathers that likely acted as a rudder, helping to balance whichever wing configuration it used. Importantly, Microraptor was not alone in this strategy. Its close relative Changyu Raptor had an even longer tail with streamers extending nearly 12 inches 30 centimeters, proportionally one of the longest tail feather arrangements known. Studies suggest this additional surface was highly effective for pitch control, keeping the animal from tumoring nose forward during descents. Together, fossils of Microraptor and Changyu Raptor show that Microraptorines as a group were experimenting with tail-based control systems as much as with their unusual wing arrangements. 
Beyond posture, Microraptor also exhibited signs of more advanced flight mechanics. Evidence for a propatagium, the leading edge membrane critical in modern bird wings, suggests its airflow could be shaped during both upstroke and downstroke. Folding mechanics in its arms meant reduced drag during recovery strokes. And although its chest lacked the fully developed supracoracoideus pulley that powers the rapid upstroke of birds, it appears to have had a simpler version. This would have allowed stronger wing raising than gliders without such a system pointing again to something more than a purely passive flyer. Hints of bird-like locomotion show up elsewhere in the body. Its pelvis angled forward in a way closer to early birds than to classic theropods, adjusting weight distribution for aerial balance. Limb proportions indicate a partial shift toward knee-driven movement, a system more efficient for perching or leaping into the air. Taken with its asymmetrical feathers and specialized joints, these shifts make Microraptor a bridge form, mixing older theropod traits with those heading towards bird flight. Recent work comparing feather numbers and vein asymmetry places it in an intermediate zone, not at the level of sparrows or hawks, but clearly beyond the simplest gliders. Rather than a single breakthrough, what we see is evolution layering, many small improvements, larger lift surfaces experiments in hindwing posture, rudder-like tails, and partial adaptations for powered mechanics. Microraptor embodied several of these steps all at once preserving in its anatomy the overlapping stages that eventually produced the first true birds. That mix of traits is what makes Microraptor important. Its four-winged body shows us that the road to flight was not straightforward, but filled with experiments, many of which vanished as conditions changed. Yet its legacy lies not in disappearance, but in shaping the aerial possibilities that later species would refine. Fossils also reveal how Microraptor lived as a predator. Several specimens preserve direct evidence of meals, fish scales the bones of a lizard the foot of a small mammal, and even part of a bird's wing inside its ribcage. These finds show it was not a narrow specialist, but a generalist that hunted or scavenged whatever small vertebrates were available both in water and in trees. Its feet add another clue. Studies comparing Microraptor's toe pads to those of living raptors found hawk-like structures suggesting it may have been capable of seizing prey in the air or pinning it on the ground. That said, paleontologists caution that toe anatomy alone does not prove aerial hunting was routine. Instead, Microraptor is best understood as an opportunist equipped for many strategies gliding, snatching or scavenging, depending on circumstance.